Good morning guys. Yesterday I set up a camp on the hill in front of the Magadan. The Hey guys, it's Matt. We've looked at the Vagabond channel before. This is the most hardcore hitchhiking I've ever seen. It will compare, compare to the most hardcore hitchhiking of all time. He had to fly over here, Novosibirsk or whatever, flew hours here to this Magadan. This is Siberia. Okay, this is, I mean, in the fall, right about now, it's, it's getting to 10 to 15 degrees and will go below zero in just a few weeks. I mean, this is the most, one of the most inhospitable regions. Mongolia down here, Mongolia is incredibly hard to survive, inhospitable. This is what? Uh, close to, uh, could be a thousand miles north. So he hitchhikes, meets another guy along the way. They hitchhike to Magadan to Yakutsk, is it? And um, I mean, every single town and city along the way, it's from the old Stalin Soviet era. They're all, the buildings are all burnt out and abandoned and windows are out. And there's actually a lot of opportunities for us for not milk free zones. If the not milk is listening to this, we're interested in the road from Magadan to it right here. Look at this as you zoom in on it. It's called the kingdom of permafrost. It says the kingdom of permafrost. What the hell? It doesn't even say you could. Let me just go. Is it? It just says the kingdom of permafrost. 34 hours by car. That's basically from New York City to Florida to Miami and then back again. It's that far. I mean, this land mass uh, is, is just enormous. What associations does the word Kalama evoke in you? If you ask this question to a random person in Russia, in response you will hear freeze, prison, detainee, road, Stalin, Gulag, and something like this. All these words are directly related to Magadan. During the Stalinist repressions, about 2 million people were sent to labor camps in Kalama, According to various estimates, half of them died. Nowadays, people are no longer sent to Koloma by force, and for the past 30 years in the Magadan region there has been an outflow of the population. In the summer of 2021, I decided to find out what life looks like in the main gold mining state in Russia, but at the same time one of the fastest emptying regions of the country. He covers almost 2,000 miles in his hitchhike, and uh, it was the summary set of 2021. This is um, just a month or two after the Action Jacksonation movie rental came out on VHS. You won't see one mask, I don't believe, in this entire video. So that is something interesting to, to make note of. And he does pick up a friend along the way, but he meant to do this himself, by himself. All these cities and towns along the way are the old Soviet era, some going back, of course, to the Stalin area, era, and they're all gone, they're all burnt out, they're all abandoned, except for little sparse populations of people. It seems like the whole road, there wouldn't be anybody on it at all, except this Yakutsk, is it? Seems to be, maybe there's you know several thousand people or more that live there. So the road between Magadan and this area keeps, it's you know one car or truck every 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Some, sometimes he has to wait hours on the road for a potential ride. Um, I'll show you that. They just sit there on the road sometimes for hours. So without that, that city, uh, who, I guess that's because of the gold mining. Yakutsk, I mean, these, there, there would be no one to service any of these little towns along the road. Continue hitchhiking. So hitchhiking in the morning appears to be way better than in the evening. And now we found ourselves in the abandoned village of Karamke. Its population officially is zero people, but some of them still live or at least work here. It used to be a relatively big settlement, 
back to 20th century and it appeared here in 20th century as well but now it's all about the ruins and abandoned constructions Здрасте! Да? Шестой с Магадана едем на Якутск Карантин, это здесь, да, это здесь была администрация при Сталине когда из зоны были и я хочу сказать, что по этой трассе вообще по России вы не первый раз встретиться много гадостей еще не медведей, а ну, ну, понятно, людей, гадость, которые попытаются обобрать, попытаются кто-то вас это самое, что-то, как, где-то, очень здорово. Мы продолжаем эксплорировать Карамкен и в конце концов нашли несколько заброшенных резиденциальных домов, как этот один, построенный during Сталин's эра. Guys, just a quick reminder as we go through this, I'll return to the video in a moment. If any of these buildings or abandoned towns uh, pique your interest for not milk free zone, um, put it in the comments. Again, there's no doubt this channel is monitored by the Ministry of Information, which can get the information to our representatives at not for, for not milk free zone. Right now, we're not very happy with what they've offered us. But with the right, say, resources, we could fix these Stalin era homes up. I mean, I, I see 20 of us living uh, communally in a place like this, similar to David Koresh, but without the, the ending. This one is a little bit newer, but probably was built also in USSR. We found quite interesting place, Danimastochny Hektar. This is kind of the national program uh, sponsored by the Russian government that allows any Russian citizen to get a land on Far East for free. So you send the application online and in case the government uh, confirms it, uh, then you will be given uh, a piece of land somewhere on Far East for free. Guys, you heard him. I mean, maybe we're going about this the wrong way. I mean, maybe we should just go directly to the Russian government. The not milk representatives for the Ministry of Information aren't really helping us with not milk free zone. Why don't we? I mean, they won't give it to us for free because we're not Russian citizens. Uh, they still believe they're an independent country. They don't. They wouldn't know anything about the one world system at that level. Say the old Soviet housing department. But we could offer a, a, a small amount. Uh, say five thousand dollars for everything for the entire town, and we'll offer to fix it up. We'll do community service like all the fraternities do at the big universities. There are several fishing villages on the coast of the Alhatsk Sea. The first permanent settlements in this area appeared in the middle of the 17th century, long before the construction of Magadan. The road that I've taken leads to the village of Tauisk, founded in 1634. We won't get there, but stop in front of a pair of empty three-story panel blocks of flats. This is a former fishing village Novostroika. In Soviet times, one of the best fish factories in Magadan region was located here. In the best years, about 200 people lived in Novostroika. There was a shop, a club, a kindergarten, a library, a pharmacy and other infrastructure facilities. Since 2003, Novostroika has been considered to be uninhabited. Guys, uh, I'll get away from this not milk free zone stuff in just a moment. But for those that are getting a little too excited about oceanfront view, no, sorry, it's a lake, it would be a lakefront. This high up in Siberia would be a lakefront. And it's great for hockey, it'd be frozen most of the year. There's mountain views behind. But for those that are getting excited for not milk free zone possibilities, let me just show you one thing. This is today's weather, per me making this video, October 28th. This is today's weather in Yakutsk. This is his end destination, negative 6 Fahrenheit. What's that, negative 20-something Celsius for you down in Australia. So where he is on that lake, we're, we're, he still needs to go about, oh gosh, like a 15-hour drive north. But see, where he is there, I can't get the weather exactly, but it would be, say, like 8 degrees. It wouldn't be as, as bad as this. It would be 8 to 10 degrees, and it's still October. So don't get too excited about the lakefront views. One more screenshot for those that were getting excited with those beautiful pictures and the no tails of chemical in the sky. It, it, look, average high and low temperatures for January. See, this is what's coming in a few months for Yakutsk. Um, negative 33 on the high, negative 44 on the low. But then look, by the, towards the end of January, 
it, the low only goes to negative 41, <laughs> negative 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So those that, that lakefront I was showing you, it would be probably be about negative 20 degrees if that excites you. However, the main dominance in the village, two three-story buildings with 18 apartments each have been well preserved. You can even enjoy a weather beating Soviet mosaic on the wall of one of them, while Moskvich next to it seems to be parked forever. By the way, despite the apparent neglect, Navastroka is actually inhabited. The outlines of a settlement with a monument in the form of a hammer and sickle smoothly appear on the horizon. Part of his hitchhiking journey he was by himself, but in another part he picked up a friend along the road. Maybe he's by himself here, but this guy's hardcore. He, he stops off at these abandoned towns and stays uh, in a completely dilapidated, windowless buildings? I mean, my goodness. So I'm going to spend the night in this abandoned apartment, in this abandoned five-story residential building in the abandoned settlement of Sporne, 11.30 p.m. And you see it's quite bright at the moment because in this area there are white nights in summer. Morning world, it's 6 a.m. at the moment. I have pretty decent six hours sleep. This is the next town or settlement he hitchhiked to. Uh, they're all abandoned. They're all basically dilapidated, all from the old Soviet era. I think his final destination in the heart of Siberia, Yakutsk, he's probably only about halfway there now, not even. Um, that still exists, and I don't know how many thousands of people live out there because of the gold mining or the rare earth minerals mining. I mean, if that town didn't exist out there because of the, the mining, for whatever they're taking out of the ground, I mean, there wouldn't be anybody traveling the road. I mean, everything would be completely abandoned. Welcome to Chernobyl. To be precise, to the urban locality of Sinigoria in Magadan region. This is the Orthodox cross with the same God, rescue and save Russia in such abandoned residential buildings on the background. The atmosphere here it's extremely depressive. The atmosphere here feels depressing. Well, this is the last place he was at, 100 kilometers down the road. This, all the other places, they're all the same. Uh, was the last place a bundle of charm? Senegoria is a settlement of power engineers who work at the plant. Here is literally nothing remained. All the apartments are completely empty. Only wallpapers are remained. Even the wires are cut. A lot of abandoned buildings, but there are some inhabited ones, like this one. The population outflow began here in the 90s. Less than 2,000 of the 11,000 residents who lived here in 1989 have remained. Today in Sinigoria there is a fire station, a hospital, a school, a sport complex, a boiler house and several shops. The Mother of God Church, which appeared here in the late 90s, should be noted among the cultural attractions. After exploring some abandoned houses and swimming in a local lake, I went towards the town of Susuman. So on the way back from Sinigoria, I got to the settlement of Debin. It's so tiny, I believe. Uh, less than a thousand of people live here. And now we are going straight to Susuman, Highway Kaluma. Absolutely deserted in this area. I haven't seen a car in that direction for at least 10 minutes. Let me tell you that this is the only road that connects Magadan with the big land. <laughs> so we have successfully got to Kadekchan, or at least it seems to be it. We have just met a random person on a car. He told that uh, here is nobody in Kadekchan except these guys. This settlement is completely uninhabited. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. This part of Siberia is like Alaska during certain weeks in the summer where billions of mosquitoes and all the other bugs come out because there's only a short period of time 
where there's no like frost and fr under under freezing conditions. So he has to wear a mosquito net for part of his travels. Kaikchan is a dead coal mining town in Magadan region. It was founded during the Second World War and built by Gulag prisoners. Coal was used mainly at a power plant in the neighboring settlement of Myaonje. In November 1996, an explosion occurred at a coal mine in Kadekchan and killed six people. After the explosion, the mine was closed and people began to leave the settlement. Look, I'm sorry for those poor people, but uh, we do study this thing called knot milk. Uh, an explosion occurred in 1996 in the mine, and then, uh-oh, we're going to have to close it. And you people, all you, you poor devils in these settlements need to start to leave. Oh, that wouldn't be not milk, would it? No, you'd have to be one of those people to think they could arrange something like that. They've no, they have no history of doing anything like that. In 2001, the buildings there were cut off from heating and electricity. However, Kadikchan had become completely empty only by 2010. In 2001, he said the buildings were cut off from heat and electricity. Let me remind you that it's possible that this region right here can reach negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was cut off, he said, from heat and electricity in 2001, probably in September of 2001. Oh, the explosion was 1996. And we gave you poor devils four years to leave. And what are you, a thousand people still here? Don't cut their heat off. Your heat and electricity, you're going to cut off. There's still a thousand people there. And then probably at this point, maybe that's what the day in September was. They brought Russia into the one world, you know what? And they said, ah, fuck them. We gave them a chance. Fromers tried to warn them to get out. There's probably still 700 people. And they just took away their heat and electricity, negative 45 degrees. There's another town he talks about. Again, I'm only showing you a small sliver. I want to protect his work. Of course, I'll leave a link to his uh, great work. I hope you subscribe. I mean, what this guy did certainly uh, deserves the support. That's why I don't think he'll mind me using this. He'll get probably a few hundred subscribers out of this, I hope. Um, there's another town where he talked about there. They basically uh, found themselves with no heat and electricity. And he said, I know they made it through several winters, somehow like walking miles in each direction to get coal in negative 40 degrees? I, I, I don't, it's just incredible guys, incredible. We didn't linger in Kadekchan and went straight to the highway after exploring the school. He says we are currently in the village of Ust Nira and uh, he says it's halfway. They're only halfway between where they started Magdan and Yakutsk and they're trying to find a place to sleep and this place, he thought it's the permafrost if the permafrost, that, it's always frozen. The ground is always frozen. I guess if they have two summers or something that are much warmer than expected, the permafrost can, can sag a bit and the mud actually gets a bit soft and the whole building completely cracks. He eventually makes it, of course. I don't want to show too much of his video. I think it's 50 minutes to an hour long or probably in the 40s. I think he can take a train from uh, Yakutsk. There's a train where he could get to another you know major city in Russia and then fly back to wherever he needs to go but I just found this whole I will leave a link of course this whole trek and there's there's several minutes left so we'll watch this together I mean I just found it fascinating um, he did say there was a lot of smoke in the air from forest fires sometimes they had to wait it seemed like hours before someone would come along that would not just not just take them um, for hitchhiking, but there was nobody that would come along sometimes for uh, forever. Like they just wait on the road. There's no cars, no trucks. But maybe the truckers here, they're um, maybe a little. They, they like a little company. So maybe maybe when a truck does come by, they get picked up more often than you would think. And the haze. I know the haze in the air there is from. He said from forest fires, and. Um, yeah, the, the remoteness of it, it does appeal to me. I know for many of you, it, it does appeal to you, the remoteness of it. Um, and not just not just not no free zone, to be left alone from the madness and the electromagnetic bombardment, um, but just, just to be left alone by, you know, I crave this anymore, just by society. It's social media and it's, x or now twitter and just it's nonsense and you know the people that you meet 
<laughs> when you're walking down the street. It's the people that you, it's the zombies that you meet each day. I don't know. I don't, this place, at first I was excited for Not Milk Free Zone. Okay, this is, is he at Yakutsk? He might be, he might be pretty much there at this point. It, it is a decent sized settlement. Um, but after after seeing the temperatures and whenever you do have some warm weather, you just get, you get mosquitoed. Uh, it's not, I, I'm not sure this is our, if the, if the Not Milk is listening, we will not really pursue this region for not milk free zone we'd like to withdraw our interest just so you make oh 33 kilometers look at that 33 kilometers left to yakutsk i think he does a whole separate video because he really doesn't show you his destination must make that a separate video oh boy all right guys i thought you find that interesting i'll see you soon thanks